today, General Robert E. Lee begins his attack with the full force of 160 Confederate cannons lined up on Seminary Ridge. Welcome. You have in your hands a virtual time machine set to transport you to July of 1863. This is the main menu for Gettysburg, a nation divided, with two options to explore. We'll start with the battlefield. Its map shows numbered locations, places with features to check out. We've clicked on a green one, and it shows the three kinds of features you can choose, a 360-degree view, artifacts to find, or experiences you can watch. You can also reach these features with corresponding buttons on the left. We'll select Find Artifact. Note the camera icon at the bottom right corner. Click that to take pictures and screenshots. At any time, click the top left X button to go back to the previous screen. Back at the... My name is Mary Virginia Wade, though most people know me as Jenny. I was born May 21st, 1843, in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. My father was a tailor and had his troubles with the law. If My name is Salome Myers, but folks call me Sally. I was born in Gettysburg in 1842, and I grew up there. Confederate Major General J. Johnston Pettigrew is on his horse, with Cemetery Ridge in the distance behind him. Tap on the Play Scene button to watch the battle from here, or tap the 360 button and spin around to see locations marked on the battlefield. Tapping a flag reveals the commander of the unit at that location. Yesterday's battle failed to move the Union flanks. Today, General Robert E. Lee begins his attack with the full force of 160 Confederate cannons lined up on Seminary Ridge. Firing back from Cemetery Ridge is Union artillery of 100 cannons in what is still the largest artillery battle ever fought in the Americas. Meanwhile, General J. Johnston Pettigrew's division of Southerners is battered, wounded, and exhausted from the previous two days of fighting. These men take refuge in the trees and field behind the Confederate artillery battery, trying to protect themselves from Union cannon fire. The Union cannons overshoot their targets, with some shells landing in the woods behind the Confederate artillery battery on Seminary Ridge, taking their toll on already suffering rebel troops before they can have a chance to advance into battle. When the Union artillery barrage slackens, then goes silent, rebel troops, including General Pettigrew's division, believing the enemy cannons are no longer a threat, began their assault, what's now known as Pickett's Charge. But when they see smoke suddenly rising from the ridge in front of them, they realize the awful truth. The massive Confederate cannonade missed, overshooting their targets, leaving most Union cannons untouched. The tactic to make Confederates believe the Union guns had been destroyed worked. Union artillery rains down on General Pettigrew's division. Union soldiers watch in horror as the rebels maintain their discipline, continuing to dress their ranks as men fall, 
marching forward as if on parade. It is a desperate assault to attempt, complicated by the fact that there was little coordination between Confederate commanders, thus adding to the fog of war. Pettigrew and his men reach the plank fences that line Emmitsburg Road. After a brutal march across the killing field, the rebels are finally close enough to return fire, but they are in range of the Union rifles. The fences at Emmitsburg Road are both obstacle and cover, a death trap. They must climb both fences as Pettigrew leads a disorganized mass of desperate men to begin the final assault. Rising up from behind a stone wall, Union soldiers under Brigadier General Alexander Hayes deliver a continuous and concentrated wall of fire. Pettigrew's advancing men suffer heavy losses and begin to withdraw without reaching the wall. No decision from command is needed. The fight for them is hopelessly over. Pettigrew lost one third of his attacking force and never reached the Union line. 470 men dead, 1,893 wounded, and 337 captured. Gettysburg, certain the Confederate army is gathering nearby. His 2,700-man cavalry is the only unit in place to resist the oncoming rebels. From the cupola atop the Lutheran Seminary, General Buford watches the action, then looks down to General Reynolds commander of a 10,000-man infantry corps. What's the matter, John? All the devils to pay. Can you hold out until my corps comes up? I reckon I can. <laughs> 